Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. And boy do I have some great news for you, because I think I have found my favorite hunt the deck to play in the Bosner Spoons Day meta game. It's too bad that it's in my original build, this is Casey's deck, but I just had to play it when I saw it on Twitter. It's Casey's Midrange Hunter, and this deck is freaking awesome. I especially like to play this deck against Paladin, because the return of Unleash the Hounds. Some people are trying to fight Paladin with stuff like Mossy Horror, but come on, Mossy Horror usually comes down after they have already had a chance to play Fungal Mancer or level up, but Unleash the Hounds can typically wipe a token board before they get the chance to do that. And as an added bonus, when you play Unleash, they have a pretty big board, you play Unleash, suddenly your Sea Giants are free. So not only do you wipe the board, but you also get to drop a Sea Giant on the board at the same time. This is this deck is really meant to beat up Paladin, and there will be plenty of examples of Paladin games in this video. It is also a lot of fun to take against Druid, Bear Shark has always been a fun card to play against Druid. Druid just struggles so hard to deal with it, especially when you can drop Bear Shark and then you can Houndmaster that Bear Shark, so some great stuff going on there. There are no fancy death rattle synergies in this deck. There's no toying around with secrets. This is just pure beasts, beast synergies, play on curve, get a couple of swing turns with Unleash with potentially Houndmaster Shaw giving you minions rush, so if you can play Shaw and it lives, you can do nice things. Or later in the game you can play Shaw into minions. And of course it has Deathstalker Exa, because you kind of like to have Deathstalker Exa so that you can beat up all those big spell mages or warriors, and even defend against some aggressive decks. It's a great deck to play, a lot of fun indeed. It's a purebred midrange hunter, so the mulligan with this deck in general is fairly simple. You want to curve out, so you're looking for that dire mole, razor mole beetle, companion bear shark. You're looking for those one drop, two drop, three drop. If you can find your curve, that's awesome. The slower the matchup, the greedier you can be. So if you're facing something like a druid, I actually don't even keep Diamond against druid. One drops are not that great there. I want to start up with something more powerful. I'm much more heavily looking into bear sharks. And if you're facing a deck where just no amount of minions that you can put in your deck will do, like Horde Warrior, then keep the dead stalker. I keep dead stalker against warrior, and I keep dead stalker against mage. Or against everything else, I mulligan it away. And when you're up against Paladin, Unleash is awesome. Do hold on to that one. It is a deck that curves out, plays threats, wins games, but it's still fun to play, and with the Unleash and Sea Giant in it, and Shaw, there are a few things that you can do in the mid-game that can swing games around and do nice things. Overall, I feel much more confident playing this than I do playing something like a Secret Hunter, because this deck is much more consistent, every card in it supports a singular purpose. And there is some swing potential to it, so if you fall behind, there are certain draws that can definitely bring you back into the game. Overall, a great deck, and let's go take a look at it in action, these games are awesome. I suppose keeping Sea Giant is too greedy. I don't even want to keep tracking. I want to try to find the one drop to play on one instead of having tracking out there. It is odd Paladin as I assumed. Of course, if it turned out to be even Paladin, things would be slightly different. I need to get on the board, so I need to coin the beetle here. Now that I have a 2-drop into 2-drop, it's fine. Then I can unleash before the... I can unleash before the big ones come. I mulliganed hard for you, but didn't quite make it. Oh well. We'll play another beetle. Now it's an interesting turn. Because if he goes for lots of tokens, then Unleash is going to punish him very hard. I will still have to hit with these two though, because he filled the entire board.
Can we trade up? Trade down the board. Okay. But he can build another. Upside is that I can play Houndmaster. I have a couple of options here. I could go Diamol Bear Shark or I could go Houndmaster. I think I want to go Diamol Bear Shark. If I Houndmaster this, I can use it to trade value trade here. I can use this to value trade here. Actually, that is pretty good. I think it's good enough. So I trade there and I trade there. Don't leave him a board that he can use a fungal mancer on. But is he going to get that board anyway in a couple of turns? Can I really stop him from doing it? Maybe I cannot. After all, my minions are getting low on health. And that mall is a big deal. Takes down a minion here, it's going to take more, down more minions in the future. I can track into something, maybe. Let's see what I can track into. That stalker Rexa. Yep. I can track into that stalker Rexa. That's, that's the beauty. But it's not good enough against level up anyway, though. Oh well. I'll trade there. Bear Shark Diamol. Try to keep fighting for the board. But eventually he's going to be able to do level up on the same turn when he creates the tokens. Wasn't Divine Shield Mall at least. Yeah, it wasn't. Because eventually he will be able to do it just... Oh dear, oh dear. Well, he can't... With this he can't kill more than one minion yet. He needs something more. And boy, he really wants to kill two minions. And I have to ask myself, do I want to go that stuck Rexa now? What options do I have? I can play high main. What if he plays Fungal Mancer? He value trades. This will be a 4, 4, 2. This will be a 4, 3. It will go down to 4, 2. I'm fine against the Fungal Mancer with the high main play. I can do high main. Try to buy a bit more time, but eventually. When the mana comes higher, he can eventually just do so many things. Maybe Hymen to save Rex off a wider board. Yeah, I think Hymen was the correct choice here. Absolutely. So is there the Fungal Mancer? Nope. Just a Divine Favor for two cards. So this is actually going to be just fine. Because I will Rex this board down. Do I take the trade? Yeah, I will take the trade too. I could spend a Hunter's Mark, then I can hit face. Then I don't have Hunter's Mark candle shot for later. Does he have weapon removal in that deck? I think it's unlikely. This is the Dead Stalker. And high main trades away that one. And I equip the candle shot. Because I don't think he has weapon removal. Satisfying Rexa Belkar. Yeah, but Odd Paladin can fill in the spot so many times. They can they can do this all day. Like C. As I just said, they can do this all day long. And eventually he will find level ups and fungal mancers too. So if I play Stitch Tracker. I could look for Shaw, then I could play Shaw, and with Tracker and Shaw I could kill a bunch of this stuff. That's one line. I could only still kill two minions. I need to build a beast. My beasts have a charge. Well, that's a piece of good news. Random Death Knight card wouldn't be bad. I need my beast having charge. So 
I will hit here. My beast have a charge, will kill this, and this will kill that. Let's try this approach. He could find level up, he could find Fungal Mancer. He can make more tokens for that level up board. He doesn't have either of those. And he actually concedes. And preparing for two means that I need to get on that board. I love Animal Companion, but I have to get on that board. He kept all the cards too. No! I mulligat everything and I still couldn't find anything. No! That's the double whammy. Wait a minute, have you ever been at Legend? Are you kidding? <laughs> That's a fun joke. I've been to Legend tens of times. I've been to top 100 Legend several times. <laughs> so funny, funny jokes you have there. Does it don't count the times Rexor is drawn? It only counts the time Rexor is played. That is the that is the percentage of turn when Rexor is played when it's played. It doesn't tell you in how many games Rexor is actually played. It's looking a bit tough. I guess Bear Shark is fine here. He's obviously going to kill it, but he's unlikely to have buff cards, so he might be inclined to use the Flame Imp. Soul Infusion. Why do you call? Oh, he's not in... Oh, he is in the trading, okay. Intriguing. Not the time to unleash yet. This is small time. Small razor, more time. But this way he will trade away his two ones, though. Maybe this wasn't optimal. I mean, the alternative was just to hero power. Let him build some more stuff on the board. Oh, there's the there's the big one. And because now he's just going to trade away all the two ones. Well, maybe not all of them. I guess still, this still doesn't look very promising. I have to risk it now. Right. I could play Rexa next turn. I need to play the Sea Giant here. I was thinking of putting both of these down to two. But then if he has buffs... I think I actually have to trade away these minions. And go face with these two. But he just buffs and goes face, right? He had the fungal enchanter regardless, so that was the thing. Time to wreck so. Now I trade down the Fungal Enchanter. I need to trade a 4 too. But he can buff. He has used both Voodoo Doctors and the Fungal Enchanter, so if he doesn't buff this, he's unlikely to be able to heal it. And that means that I can deal with that with a candle shot. Okay, there's an Unleash. I can do Unleash Houndmaster too. Four Hounds, one of them is a 3-3. Tree, tree. That's so much better than using anything else here. Unleash Houndmaster. So the 1-1 one, one Hounds kill this one. And they kill this one. And this Hound value trades over there. He still has one card that he has had since the beginning. Not a kept card. Oh, it's a solarium. Well, that's a, that's a way to get into the game. That's definitely high in the list of ways to get into the game. 
Lost the fungal measure, not the coin. Oof, that was a relief at least. Time to build a beast. Probably a race or more. Poisonous rush raise them all for seven mana. Not my favorite card. Big don't raise them all for four mana. I like that one. And this turn I play the high main. He's all out of cards in hand, so he's of course going to be tapping. We've seen both fungal mancers, right? No, we won't see the one that was discarded. Okay. In the light's name. Face and face and face is the place. Well, I could do flanking strike and hound master. What do I flanking strike? The light warden. Can he find healing? He doesn't have a lot of healing left. I could also flanking strike a chain gang. Or I could just do the zombiest. Zombiest hero power. Candle shot. Get a 5-8 taunt on the board. I'll do the hound master. And I'll do the flanking strike. And I'll equip the candle shot. Now I have an 8-4 taunt here. These two on the board don't do much to it. He can of course find a soul fire to kill it. So what was the card that he found? Not a soul fire, but he did find his final healing piece. Okay. Lots of razor moss here. So first we build a beast. Detrus will gain three armor. Doesn't sound too bad. Taunt for six mana. Sounds like a fine beast to me. But I'm going to do some adapting first. Let's adapt this beast with plus three attack. Let's set up this beast with poisonous. And then I can take down this fellow. I can take down this fellow. I can take down this fellow. And I'm sitting happily behind a couple of beasts. I think I'm winning this one now. I think this is now looking really good. I don't think he has anything more left that can beat this. Bear shark isn't strong enough. I need to I need to find a one drop. I absolutely have to find a one drop here. I'm like on everything in order to find a one drop against Paladin. Even a candle shot. But preferably a mole. Paladin keeps his entire hand. You hate to see that. I can't get anything that costs one. I can't even find anything that costs two. That's Paladin for you. That's Paladin. So I'm going to bear shark on this board. Let's see what he's going to do about that. I think he's going to create more tokens at least. But what is his trading plan? Oh. Double Divine Shields is very, very strong. I can't easily beat that Double Divine Shield there. But I still have to unleash this turn. Because then there will be exactly 10 minions on the board, so Sea Giant will be free. Even though I don't get to do quite as much as I was hoping to. I still have to do it now. If I let him just build more, I think it's going to be too late. The problem here is that if he has level up for next turn, that's going to be so powerful. 
I still need more. I'm going to start trading these. And I'll play the shore. So Fungalmancer is great because he can play Fungalmancer into the Fireflies. Level up is less great because then he still needs to trade two into shore. Well, here they come. Here they come. I guess it's Diamond Hound Master turn. I could also do Razor Mole Bear Shock, but I think I want the Taunt. And then... Trade away. Trade away. Trade away. Trade away. Just trying to get rid of these Silverhand recruits here make level up worse. He can't hero power into level up yet this turn. But he can have Tarim. That's a 20% pickup. 20% of the time he has it. Is there any reason for me to attack with the Houndmaster? Yeah, it, pl it plays around Vine Cleaver. There is a reason. Trying to be aggressive still. I can raise a more distance, see if I can find like Wind Fury for it. I cannot. These, these are all useless. That was tough. There are no spells or hero powers that he has that could target it anyway. This has to be poisonous then. Can I pick up a taunt here? I can. I can get this beetle down there too. I can get some work done. But not quite as much as I had hoped. And should he find another fungal mancer or level up? That would be incredibly good. Thank you. I appreciate your support. He's being very, very aggressive. He might get rewarded. Look, it looks like definitely looks like he is getting rewarded here. This one has to trade that one away. So I do want to kill this fellow. Flanking strike and using this so that I can get some armor going. Trade down one of those. He still has one card that he has been there for a long time, and if it's Leroy, that's lethal. It's not Leroy. But it still isn't still isn't far. Oh boy, oh boy. Razor more. Let's see what I can find with the adapt. Wind Fury. Heat heat. Wind Furious to play. So I can hit, hit the Taunt. And then I can hit the Stormwind Champion. Which allows me to trade away the Stormwind Champion. Which allows me to trade away the rest of his board. And Hero Power. But he has two more cards and he's generating tokens. I'm at 7, so Leroy plus a single surviving token is lethal. Not a pretty wasteful level up, I think. But let's see. I'll hit here. And I trade that one away. And I'll trade this one away. Do I leave the Divine Shield on the Squire? If he finds Fungalmancer, 
then he can buff up the square and take a value trade. I still need, think I need to go face this turn. Oh, Baku is just lethal. And Seven Jaime doesn't contest it. I had no outs against Baku. Impressive against Druid, now is it? No. Is Diamond that impressive against Druid? No. Seven Jaime is impressive against Druid. Well, Flanking Strike really isn't impressive against Druid. I was trying to find some beasts that can push a little bit more damage. Bear sharks, animal companions, even a beetle. Because this is really now... This didn't get any better. I'm not sure if it got much worse, but... Now everything got much better again. Thank you, deck. Thank you. I, I never lost faith in you. It, it was obvious that I was completely, completely believing in this deck all the time. Didn't you see? Own oh, midrange hunter list. Unfortunately, not its cases, as it says there on the on the heading. I do credit whenever I use someone else's stuff. But it looks so fun that I had to try it. I know I haven't built my own decks recently. Recently being in the net last week, <laughs> which I guess isn't that long of a time, but to me it seems like a long time. Some kind of spellstone coming down on the on the Houndmaster, no doubt. I think I need to track here. Let's see what I can pick up. Houndmaster Shaw seems like a good card. I like Houndmaster Show. Houndmaster Show is a fun card. Let's play that card. He just used one spell stone. What else does he have? Because now this just activated the rest of my hand. Yep, that would be the Houndmaster. I suppose he probably has some kind of a way to kill it. Nope. Cool. He can have mind control text in this deck. If I play seven high main and he kills it, then he could mind control tech the result. I could play an animal companion though. 10, 19 damage, not quite enough. I think I can play an animal companion here. And it's always Huffer. The power of Huffer. Power of Huffer is a coming. Alright, suddenly this starts to look quite promising. There's the Spreading Plague, but can you play Spreading Plague and kill the Shaw? That's the key question. You have to kill the Shaw. Spreading Plague, double Arcane Tyrants, and killing the Shaw. That's a good play for 7 mana. I highly recommend. If you find yourself having 7 extra mana, then by all means, use that to develop the 1923 health and 1123 11, stats on the board and kill a minion. Let me see. Houndmaster. I'm going to lose the bear shark. I can't find a way to save the bear shark. Then I will have no beasts on the board. Then I can't have lethal. This is not good. I couldn't figure out that turn in time. Seven mana was really difficult. I would have had great plays for eight and stuff, but... Taking Mossy for these druids, I don't think it's strong enough. can dodge this one down. Push face with this fellow. Play a high main. He can coin. 
ultimate infestation. That's possible. Then he goes up to 19. I have 10, 12. I will kill him if he does that. So we're killing him if he coins ultimate infestation. And <laughs> good night, Diano. Take care. Unless he has an inner bait there. Isn't he just very, 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 very dead? I believe it when I see it. Uther. I think he's going to fight by sending lots of young men to their deaths. Those poor recruits dying to these massive moles. But then ultimately they will be leveled up what's left of them and then they will kill me. So yeah. Get three out of four cards too. That's solid. Lots of paladins on the ladder nowadays. Lots of paladins. You definitely have to be ready for paladin. Oh, holy guacamole. That was pretty solid. That gets such a nice two for one trade. And I can't afford to give him two for one trades. I would have to be making lots of those myself. I would have to go two for one, three for one to beat the tokens. That is obviously not happening. That's obviously not happening with this hand right now. Sorry, this was a loss. Just a draw loss. Those happen sometimes in Hearthstone. But you can't do anything about them. Have to play the Shaw here. I mean, he can trade Shaw away on board already. And if he has something like a mall that gives divine shield. Level up. Level up is from World of Warcraft. You level up. They become more powerful. Just don't have anything on these. I guess I have to hunt this mock the raid the raid leader. And I don't like this play after all. I did have to kill one to deny a good fung Alamanza, but Oh bugger. He had that one too. What doesn't he have? Seems to have everything. Now I can no longer deny a good fungal master. Sea giant or high main. High main is better thanks to death rattles. Punch away the divine shield. If he doesn't have fungal master or level up, well, level up can only be played this turn really if he has lost in the jungle. So that would be a two card combo. But Fungal Mancer can be played regardless. Everything always faced. These Paladins are very aggressive. So we'll get the Unleash on the board, right? Or do I make one of them the Taunt Minion? What if he has silence? I don't think he has silence though. I'll do something like this, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is good enough. They don't usually run Owl nowadays, no. 
It is rare. It is rare at the moment. For them to run Owl. Sixteen, twenty, twenty damage. Do I do I clear the board, or do I push face? Because I really want to push face. Five, six, seven damage here. What if he has a silence? He needs only two more damage if he has a silence. Tarim would be lethal. No, but he doesn't have enough mana to play Tarim. I don't know, I ran out of time to think a little bit there. I was really trying to figure out if this... I couldn't figure out if he has an out, somehow. I tried to figure out if there was an out for him, but I couldn't. So I set it up so that he will die to the hero power. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.